Welcome back to Kay's Corner. In today's video, we're going to discuss when to press your quilt block. Okay, now here's the conversation. I take more flack about when I press and why I don't press my quilt blocks when I'm in the process of piecing that block. And I, I thought I'd work up a project to share that with you as to why I think making your pressing your number one priority, like you make a half square triangle and run to the iron. I don't understand that. So what I'm going to do, I've chosen a project. Um, the Tuscan windmills is one of my favorite patterns that I've done. So I just am taking a top row and I'm going to make a three block table runner because this these elements gave, gave me a really good opportunity to show you why I don't press as I go. I kind of make my decision up after my elements are made. So let's take a look at what's laying on the table and let me see if I can show you the entire block, what I love about this particular pattern is it all comes out of one size strip. I used my good measure half square triangle, my good measure quarter square triangle, and of course on my table runner, as we've done on a previous video, I used the good measure side set triangle ruler. But let's take a look at the elements, and what you see laying on the table is a rectangle, a flying geese unit, and a quarter square unit. So I have three elements that make up this patchwork block. And each one of these elements sewn together creates, I need four of those, and that'll create the entire block. So what I've done is I went ahead and sewed half of the block together so that we could discuss why I don't press in advance. And then on these two, I've pieced them, but they're not sewn together and or pressed. And then this, this unit is not even sewn together. So you can see if, let's start with the one not sewn together. So the very first thing I do is take this quarter square unit and I separate those and I sew four of these together and four sets of those together. And then I put that block together. In this particular element, my flying geese, I have my two half squares and my one quarter square, so I put that element together, times four. Once I do that, then those guys kind of set in there and the rectangle comes back there and now I have this element. Most every time I see someone piece these elements, the minute they get this fellow done, they run to the iron and they do the same thing here. I love my iron. Those of you who know how much I love Laura Star and how much I love it when I use it, but I just don't use it at what I consider inappropriate times. Now, like everything, it's you get to decide what you're doing, but let me show you why I don't. So if I were to just turn this little element over right here, you'll see that I have choices of which way I send those seams and which way I send these seams, and which way I sent these seams. I make this decision once I put, once I put this pair to this pair, I have to decide about this guy. And I typically will honor light to dark when I do this. But then you go, oh dear, what happens here? This is where it starts to be arbitrary. Let's just say you went to the iron and you went, I'm gonna press this way. I typically will press all four of these elements in exactly the same way. Now let me turn the block over and here's where I want you to really pay attention to the way that, I've, that I'm have that i showing this. I press the light quarter square in the four quarter square unit. I press the light one to the dark when I join this side to this side. And I did a little pre-thinking on this. I don't just automatically decide where to send the seam until I've thought about how many of them come together in an intersect point 
And that's what helps me make up my mind. So if you take a look right here on this point, you'll see that when these flying geese are pressed out, as they are here, I've got to worry about that much bulk, but see what happens in the direction they're facing. When this one goes this way and this one goes this way, I end up with a wonderful seam. I don't even have to take that seam open. That's nice and flat. The same thing is true right here. And this is one thing you run into a lot when you're sewing flying geese. Everyone asks me, which way do I press it? I have found that you are almost always going to be better to leave that nose going up. Because if, if you don't, see how that nose is up? This is empty space. This has a point. So I'm, I can send it into that empty space much safer than I could take it this way. So those are things that I pre-think. And once I make one segment, which is this one right here, all four are made that same way. I would never have pressed these two units I just did this so that I could show you on camera what they look like. I would have made all four of these knowing exactly which way I was going to send them. Then I would have made the block, as you can see in the table runner, and then I would have pressed it. But I would have directed them. So my language typically on pressing is most people tend to press and then go to the sewing machine and sew the way you pressed. I prefer to go to the sewing machine and direct the seam. Then when I'm completed, I press the way I sewed. I think it's a smarter way to work. You have less times that you have to reverse those seams. And every time you put the iron on that fabric, you compromise the likelihood that it could stretch and or and or. So as much as I love my iron, I don't do it until I'm all finished. So hopefully, if you reconsider as you're working, gosh, which way are those seams going to made up? Will they touch each other? And that's why I like to lay them out, look at that, and have a clear path to which way I'm going to sew. One thing that you might want to try before you cut like a really complicated block, I think one of the best elements to play with is just a pour patch. Four patch or a nine patch because that has seams that need to be reversed and maybe set two or three together and that'll give you a little bit of a hint about paying attention to which way your seams are going. A lot of people then decide to press open and I can at times but I think it just means you didn't spend enough time trying to determine could you control those seams by just alternating the direction that they went. So. Let us know what you think about this. I'd love to hear if you found this beneficial when you were pressing and if you still, if you can break yourself of that habit to press too quickly. See you in the next video.